I've been coming here for 75 years. And I used to love coming down here with my father and getting up on the catwalk and walking, exploring the yards. My family has been, had the National Western in their bloodstream, I think. I'm the third Charles Kirk that's been involved with the National Western. The first one was my, my grandfather. He and his twin brother were two of the original stockholders when they started this. We have a, one old picture of the them showing Kirk Brothers, Gall three-year-old Galloway steers in the John Clay Alley, which would be would have been right up about two alleys up at that point. Every day in life as a young child, I got a taste of the, the stockyards here in Denver because my folks always listened to the market report. We had a radio station there, KFKA in Greeley, 1310, and there was a fine gentleman that was really dedicated to informing the public. I was told that he would get on a train, come down here every morning. He would get the market report. He would go back there, and I think it was about 12.30, he would give the market report and uh, do a wonderful job keeping people informed. And with his deep voice, I remember how he closed out every report. And folks, remember Pearl Harbor, a day of infamy. I remember showing my first steer here in 1952 and kind of a monumental year because that's the year they dedicated the Coliseum. Yes. And I walked into that building, never had I seen such a big building in my life, yes. never dreaming that I would be back some 25 years later and wishing it was bigger. Uh, my first experience down here was when I was probably 18 years old. And I grew up in Castle Rock, and there was a family named Winkler that showed carloads of shorthorn steers. And uh, they would gather a crew together, and uh, about four of us, I was one of them. And if you ever had a really interesting experience, is to wash two carloads of unhalter broken shorthorn steers tied up on halters down here in the middle of January with the wind blowing down the railroad tracks, you just prayed for your, your Levi's to freeze because they were warmer than when they were wet. And I always, uh, from that very first year exhibiting here, I just had a fondness for the stock show. I loved the smell, the aroma, the people, the excitement, everything. Well, being down here and I knew the stock show went on, I was fortunate my folks attended every year. And uh, I remember being in the old stadium. I love that old stadium, still do. Uh, going back all the way to about 1941 and how I love the rodeo. I could still take you there and show you the place where my folks used to stand. I couldn't get tickets, but they took turns holding me so I could see things and how I loved everything. My father, Charles Kirk uh, II, I guess, used to have an expression after he'd worked here about 20 years as a superintendent or whatever, that the National Western would give you the incurable disease. You got stock show fever, and that was that you just couldn't leave it alone. You always had to have some involvement, either as an exhibitor or involved somehow. So that was stock show fever. A fellow named Willard Sims, who was the editor of the Record Stockman. When I got out of the Navy, my first job here was as Willard's driver in the <laughs> for the show. He. Uh, had enough appointments that I would, uh, one of the car agencies would give him a brand new Oldsmobile, which doesn't exist anymore, and, and I would uh, drive him around the city and through the snow, and I had a sticker which allowed me not the same admittance as a police car, but pretty close. And over the years, I worked up to where I was superintendent of the judging contest in the late 60s, early 70s. I always worked hard to uh, always uh, get the approval of Willard Sims, and I think he recognized that. So in 1975, he hired me to do a renovation of the yards, which is the greatest part of the show, in my opinion. It was my happiest three years. Because down here, you got the salt of the earth people that raise the breeding stock, the bulls to sell, the people out on the farms and ranches coming in to buy stock. And that's what made the, the trade show up on the hill so great. 
was uh, <clears throat> people come here, they knew were the ones living on farms and ranches that actually used the equipment, a great place to sell uh, machinery, uh, livestock handling equipment. And uh, so it just, everything supported one another. But my years here in the yard were wonderful. Well, probably about 1970, uh, we got involved in some, the show was having some financial uh, struggles at that point in time on some investments and how things were going and that uh, I got involved with Willard and we started doing some things that were kind of creative that worked. And as a result of that way, I ended up being made a director of this thing and that's, I don't know the exact year, but probably 1982, 83, somewhere in that range. So I, like my dad said, I have stock show fever and it's gone on from that time. Well, I think the major changes with the National Western is it's changed with how Colorado has changed. When, it, when I first remember it, it was primarily geared for the, the livestock producers, because that was Colorado's major enterprise at the time, was agriculture and in cattle was kind of number one. Um, and I can remember a lot of cowboys would come in from Utah, Wyoming, New Mexico, and they'd, the joke used to be was, uh, do you have a room that you're gonna stay in? He said, no, we're only gonna be there three days. We won't need a room. <laughs> if it was longer than that, or you brought your wife, then you had to do something like that. Does the show uh, continues to grow, uh, serving uh, agricultural industry, serving the people of Colorado and, and the people of the metropolitan Denver area. My only uh, pleasure is I'm just glad there's younger people working on it because I remember a few years when we went through the expansion, I wore a hard hat more than I wore my cowboy hat. The change has gone from being oriented totally towards the exhibitors and the livestock industry and the support crew that, that came with that to where we're now Oh, with the trade show and the rodeo, it's an educational situation for the urban front range that we have now. We're a little bit like California. Instead of having the Pacific Ocean on our west side, we have the Rocky Mountains, and we have a huge population from Fort Collins or the Wyoming line to Pueblo. And we have a lot of new people to educate what the National Western is and what Western agriculture is.